everyone. I'm here to talk about the Festival of Beltane. Um, just so you know, I'm in a different spot. I'm in my living room right now. I have the house to myself, which is like amazing. And as any mom knows, is always a wonderful day. The kids are at their actual mother's. I am their stepmother. Um, and uh, the hubby is running an errand for his parents who are elderly and with this whole isolation thing, um, it's not a good idea for them to leave the house. So he is doing this errand for them, dropping stuff off, appropriately social distancing, so don't worry about that. But I was like, hey, I can actually film in the living room where the lighting is good um, instead of, you know, in my little office area in the basement. Um, let me know if you like this spot better and I'll try to do more stuff in the spot if you prefer it. Um, but anyway, let's get on with it. We are um, here to talk about Beltane. So Beltane is one of the cross quarter festivals in the pagan neo-pagan wheel of the year um, and so the quarters are the equinoxes and the solstices and cross quarters are the halfway points between those pieces so we have Beltane, uh, Lunasa or Lammas, Samhain and we have Imbolc. Now depending what part of the world you are they're going to fall on different dates so if you're in the northern hemisphere which is where the wheel of the year is designed it's based on British um, you know, sort of weather patterns and seasons. Um, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, that's going to be on May 1st. But if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, that's going to be on November 1st. Now, some people use the um, exact degree of the sun halfway between the spring equinox and the summer solstice, uh, which is um, for the Northern Hemisphere, 15 degrees of Taurus. And for the Southern Hemisphere, that's going to be the sun at 15 degrees of Scorpio. You don't have to follow that exact degree. We, if we pick May 1st or November 1st, depending where you are, you're, you're going to be about right. So that's when it is. What it is, is it's, um, it, again, this is all based on sort of British seasons. So I'm a big proponent for adjusting for where you live because the weather here does not follow British seasons. I live in Western I live in the prairies in Canada. We have long winters. Our springs and falls are short and our summers are short and very hot. So we uh, don't follow the exact same cycle um, as the British. So adjust for where you live. I mean, we don't all live in Northern Europe, right? So um, in Britain, when it was designed, it was a celebration of the beginning of summer. So it's like the height of spring there. Um, it is a celebration of, you know, fertility. This is when people started to take the cattle out into the fields to graze, to pasture for the summer. It's when people start to plant things. Uh, it's when they start to sow things. And so it is a big celebration of, you know, spring and summer and fertility and all those kind of things. Now, where I live, it is just the start of spring. Um, I think I may have talked about this before. In bulk is not a spring festival here. It is the middle of winter. Uh, even spring equinox is not a spring festival because it's still winter. Um, it's definitely a celebration that spring is going to come. Um, but May is kind of the start of spring, like April kind of spring starts. It's really ugly spring. It's brown. It's muddy. It's uh, there's no leaves on the trees. Like right now I'm looking out the window. There's no leaves on the trees. There's no leaves on the trees. The grass is brown. Um, things are just starting to peek up uh, out from the flower garden, like little little sprouts. But there's no flowers. There's no flowers. There's, there's nothing. We've even had a May 1st where it snowed. So it's, it's a celebration of the start of spring. So I've adjusted it according to where I live and adjusted to where you live. Where you live, it may be full on spring or maybe very dry or muddy or cold. Adjust it for where you are. We don't all live in Britain. So anyway, May Day. May Day, celebration of spring, fertility. Traditionally, like I said, it was a time when the cattle went out to pasture um, and also when they were starting to, you know, sort of plant things. So it's a time to, to really um, to celebrate fertility. So some of the things that they would do traditionally, and we're talking about um, in Ireland, in Britain, in Scot like in England and Scotland, uh, Northern France, those kind of places. Um, traditionally, what they would do is light two big bonfires and they would drive the cattle in between them. And it was believed that this would ward off 
any negativity, that it would protect them from negative spirits, um, from malicious face spirits, that it would, it would protect them. And they would often put um, woods into the fire that were considered sacred, like oak and willow and ash and things. And these were things that were believed to drive away evil. They would also decorate things with flowers. So before the maypole, trees were decorated with flowers. They were decorated with uh, painted shells, with ribbons. Um, particularly trees that were flowering trees were often decorated, symbols of fertility, and this was called the May bush. Um, it depended what area you lived and what kind of tree it would be, but basically they decorate a tree up, it would be considered the May bush. It was a celebration of sort of fertility and asking the, the land spirits and the plant spirits around them to bless the fields with fertility. Um, it was also a time of feasting as well. And with these bonfires, people would often try to leap over them and make a wish. Uh, it was believed that you were blessed if you were able to leap over the bonfire. Hopefully nobody landed in the bonfire. Um, but fire, flowers are very much associated with this particular time of year. Now, over time, the Maybush became the Maypole. Uh, people would dance around the Maypole. This tradition, um, it went away sort of in the 20th century and then was revised again by paganism. My mom, who grew up in Britain, uh, remembers as a child Maypoles, but at some point during her childhood, they also kind of went away. Luckily, that's been revived in many areas, um, you know, and not just pagans either. I think a lot of people have just been bringing this back. Uh, interestingly, in Scandinavian countries, the Maypole is danced around on the summer solstice, not May Day. But um, we're talking about Beltane, which is a Celtic festival. I don't think it was necessarily a Norse or Germanic festival, but over time it did become one. Um, so it kind of traveled to those areas and it's sort of become one. Now, as a uh, modern neo-pagan or witch, you may not be able to go to big festivals to celebrate these kind of things because there has been a modern revival here in my town. Um, this year, obviously, is not happening for obvious reasons, um, but they've had a uh, what they call Beltane in the park for about 30 years where the pagan community gets together, they put up a maypole, people dance around it. Um, and it's it's been something that's been going on, but not everybody is in an area where people can go and celebrate this. Not everybody um, has access to this or is out of the broom closet and can go and celebrate those things. So I wanna give you some ideas of how you can celebrate it at home. So first of all, some correspondences if you're looking at planning a ritual for this. Now, gods and goddesses that are associated with May Day, and of course, do whatever works for you, um, are generally sort of love goddesses, things like Freya, Aphrodite, Venus, also goddesses associated with wells and rivers, like, uh, I'm not gonna pronounce this wrong, is it Coventina? She's she is uh, associated with wells in Celtic mythology because wells were also really considered sacred at this time. Offerings for the fairies were often left at wells. People would wash their faces in sacred wells or with the morning dew, believing that beauty would be granted to them if they did this on May Day morning. So if you have access to a, a sacred well or to uh, you can collect some water in the morning or rainwater overnight if it rains, you can wash your face in this and this is supposedly will give you beauty for the year. It's a lovely idea anyway. But goddesses associated with love and beauty are associated with Beltane. Also fertility gods and solar gods. So things like the Green Man and Kernunis, um, Baldur, the sun god in Norse mythology, um, Lu, all of these are associated with Beltane. So you can, um, you know, adjust if you are somebody is a devotee of them, or you want to incorporate honoring them in a ritual, you definitely can. And of course the Fae, very much associated with the Fae. So rituals to honor the Fae, leaving out offerings for the Fae are all, um, you know, things you can do on Beltane. Also flowers, flowers are associated with Beltane. So particularly spring flowers, things like primrose, um, daisies are very much associated with Beltane. Making daisy chains and crowns of chains are very, um, very much associated with May Day and Beltane. Violets, any bluebells, any kind of spring flower can be associated with Beltane. Now, if you're in the closet, you might just wanna buy yourself some flowers. Or if you live in an area where you can 
can plant flowers. Where I live, it's a little too early for that. We have to wait till after Victoria Day, which is the third Monday. It's a holiday here. It's the third Monday of May. They always say wait till after, after Victoria Day to plant things. But if you live somewhere you can plant things, you can plant them. You can at least buy your seeds if you live in a cold area like I do. So planting flowers. Flowers very much associated with this. You could wear a flower in your hair. Um, you can um, make a wreath of flowers as well, um, depending on how much effort you want to put into things. But flowers, very much associated with it. As well as honoring the fairies. You know, putting something out for the fairies is something that you can do. Or maybe you buy a fairy type ornament to put in your garden. That's another thing that you can do to discreetly sort of honor the May Day period. Um, foods associated with May Day are lamb, uh, for obvious reasons, because the lamb, I know in Britain, the lambs are starting to come out and everything. I was actually in Britain a few years ago around this time, and it is so beautiful, and it's filled with flowers, and little lambs bouncing in the field. It's beautiful. I get it. But here, not so much. So, anyway, lamb, oats and honey, so very much like oat cakes you can make. Um, also like spring, spring herbs and spring vegetables, if you're lucky enough to live in an area that has these coming out, are all things that can be incorporated into a May Day type dinner or feast. Um, herbs that are associated with it are mint and lavender and mugwort are very much associated with this particular time of year. Color correspondences are yellow, pink, white. Um, the pastel colors. Some people like to have it a little more bright and vibrant because a lot of people associate the pastel colors with spring equinox. Um, but pinks are definitely associated, purples even, with this time of year. Think floral when you think Beltane and colors. Um, animals associated with this are the rabbit, deer, cows again this fertility and very feminine type of symbology goes into it um, and then the fae that are associated with it basically this is a very fae type associated festival but think of like mythical creatures like unicorns especially because unicorns were associated with fertility and also feminine sexuality and that's another thing that's associated with Beltane is sexuality and fertility rights if you've read or watched the movie the mist of Avalon you get the idea of the whole fertility thing basically sexuality and beauty um, of course if you don't want to be fertile take precautions but you know expressing your sexuality in a healthy way can be a really great way to express to enjoy and celebrate Beltane as well now of course design rituals um, you know for you there's no right or wrong way to celebrate anything spirituality is personal and anybody who says you're doing that wrong well you know what just ignore them because I'm giving you correspondences and ideas but adjust to what works for you. Um, you know spirituality is not a one-size-fits-all and it's not a right or wrong thing. So pick the colors that you associate with this time of year. Think about herbs and flowers you associate with this time of year when you're designing a ritual. Types of rituals that you can do at this time of year are things like self-esteem work, beauty spells, uh, glamour type spells, anything to do with fertility as well. Um, also prosperity. Prosperity for the coming summer is a really great um, idea to celebrate and to ask for and to honor at this time of year. And also honoring the divine feminine within you, whether you're, ma you're male or female identifying. Um, it can be a really great right to honor the divine feminine and to honor um, our sexuality and to bless it and see it as sacred at this time of year. So I hope this has given you some ideas of what you can do for Beltane. Wherever you are in the world, I wish you a very happy Beltane, May Day, whatever you want to call it. Or if you're in the summer, summer hemisphere, a very happy Samhain. Um, I hope you're all doing well, you're all safe, and you're all, you know, um, doing as well as you can during this difficult period. Um, but I wish you all so much. I wish you well. Lula, wish you so much love. And as always, peace and love and rock and roll.